We got some questions to answer, John, and we're already 45 minutes into this sucker. Oh, my. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Cool. Kevin asks, uh, he says, uh, back when iTunes was a bloated mess, I used to use it to manage my iOS apps on my iPhone and iPad. Uh, I have a habit of downloading apps when they are free and then not really using them ever. Kevin, same. Uh, he says, then I forget what they even do. Also, same. Now, he says, I would like to be able to use my MacBook Air with an M1 chip to trim down the number of apps I've downloaded to my iOS devices. Do you know of something I don't or have any ideas on how to solve this issue? Yeah, we got to trim down that iPhone bloat, right? The app fat. Uh, I, honestly, the way I do it, there's two ways to do it in my book. Number one, to do exactly what you're asking is iMazing. I, you know, you plug that in, connect it up. And you can do it Wi-Fi or, or, you know, connected Ethernet once you get it all configured. And uh, it's, it makes it easy. You can see the list of apps. You can see how much space they're taking up. And you can just tell it to delete them. And it deletes them. And it's great. Like, it truly is way easier than doing it on device, in my opinion. That said, for me, the easiest way might be to do it in reverse. Start your phone from scratch every now and again. And only install the apps that you want. Because... If you're like me, when you're going through with iMazing and trying to delete things, you will think, oh, no, I might need that. Uh, I don't want to delete that. And I wind up deleting probably only a third of the stuff that I would actually want to delete. Whereas when I do it, when I wipe it clean and only install the things that I need, guess what? I only wind up with the things that I need. <laughs> so that's two ways of approaching it. Um I don't know. That that's what that's what works for me. 